a reason to pray. The text tells us that as Jesus came riding into Jerusalem on a donkey, the people spread their clothes in his path sort of as if they were just laying out the red carpet. You know how we do. When we know royalty is coming through, when we know somebody special is coming through, we lay out the red carpet that we might welcome them with honor. But this is what they did when Jesus was coming through. And some of them took down palms from tree branches and they laid him down in his path. And when, before he even got into Jerusalem, as he was still coming near, he was close to the Mount of Olives. And a crowd of his disciples began to rejoice and praise God, the text says, with a loud voice for all the mighty works that they had seen. They said, Blessed. Be the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. But some of the Pharisees in the crowd, there was a bunch of praises in the crowd, but there was also a bunch of Pharisees in that crowd as well. And the Pharisees in the crowd then began to rebuke the Lord's disciples. And he told them that if they should hold their peace, the stones would immediately cry out. The people were excited because they knew that their king, they were excited because they knew that their savior, the Messiah, was coming. And they had a reason to praise him with a loud voice. They had a reason to shout out loud with a loud voice. They had a reason to rejoice. But the Pharisees, they were not happy. They were, you see, so busy with their own agenda, they could not stand to see anybody else praising the Lord. And because they had no reason to praise him, they didn't want to see anybody else praise him neither. You see, when you've got a reason to praise him, you can't let somebody else's mess stop you. Let me say that again. When you got a reason to praise him, you can't let what somebody else is going through hinder your prayer. Sometimes the choir gets the best seat in the house along with me because we sit out in the congregation and we look, and you should see what happens sometimes when somebody starts feeling the spirit and they start to clap and they stop and they look. And they see they're the only one who stopped. I'm trying to tell you, when you really start to praise God for real, it don't matter who's going to praise him with you. When you really start to praise God for real, you don't let nobody stop you because somebody else got a small look on their face. We got to learn to praise God from whom all blessings flow. Even if nobody want to praise him but you, there's got to be more praises in the house than there are Pharisees in the house. You see, when you got a reason to praise him, you can't let nobody else's mess get in your way. And when you got a reason to praise him, you can't let your own mess get in your way. Some of us could be our own worst enemy. Amen? Some of us are so hung up on little things that don't mean a hill of beans. Something we should have forgotten a long time ago. Something we should have buried a long time ago. Somebody who ain't even thinking about us today. That's the last one we need to be thinking about when we come into the house of God. When you come into the house of God, every thought ought to be about the goodness of the Lord. When you come into the house of the Lord, every thought ought to be about His grace, about His kindness, about how He answers your prayer, how He used you in spite of yourself. Don't you let your own mess get in the way of you praising God. Give it to God and leave it alone. And bring forth everything. If you carry a bunch of mess, carry a bunch of mess and lay it down at the altar. If you carry a bunch of mess, carry that mess and let it be nailed to the cross. If you come carrying a bunch of mess, ask God to give you a clean heart so you can serve Him, so you can worship Him, so you can praise God from whom all blessings flow. You don't let somebody else get in the middle of your prayer. You don't let your own mess get in the way of your praise. When you've got a reason to praise him and you fail to praise him, the word of God says that the rocks will immediately cry out. The rocks. Well, if we talk about the rocks, the inanimate 
those things that are void of life, those things that are things, even they will begin to praise the Lord. I mean, God, the word of God says that everything that has breath yes. praise the Lord. Yes. But if it ever comes the moment where everything that has breath refuses to praise the Lord, I'm talking about if the birds don't want to praise him, if the cows don't want to praise him, if the roaches don't want to praise him, if the creepy crawly things don't want to praise him, God will get praised from the rocks. God will get praised from the stone. God will be praised. He's going to give his praise. God is worthy and God will give what is his due. But I'm trying to tell you, I don't want those inanimate things because as soon as I refuse to praise him, that's going to make me just as dead as a rock. As soon as I refuse to praise him, because if God getting praise from the rock, what he need me for? Mm -hmm. If God getting praise from the rock, what do he need you for? So as long as you got the breath in your life, as long as you know you got the breath that comes from Jesus, as long as you know you got the breath, you ought to praise him until your last breath. Praise him. As long as you got a reason to praise him. You see, praise is an act of worship. An acknowledgement. Or an, uh, uh, it's an acknowledgement or it's an act of recognizing who God is and what God has done. According to the text, when Jesus was approaching Jerusalem, he hadn't even gotten there yet. The whole multitude of the disciples began to rejoice and to praise God with a loud voice for all the mighty works that they had seen him perform. Hmm. They had seen him raise Lazarus from the dead. Hmm. They had seen him recover sight to the blind, even to one who was born blind. They had seen him make the lame to walk and make the deaf to talk. And they had seen the lepers cleanse. So they were praising him for the things that he had done, acknowledging and recognizing that only God could have done these things. They praised Jesus. Have you ever experienced a situation where you knew that only God could have done it. Have you ever come through a situation where there was no doubt in your mind that only God could have brought you through? Oh, somebody knows what I'm talking about. Finding yourself in the valley with the shadow of death. When the doctor said there was no more they could do. When the bank said you ain't had no more time. When your body said you can't go on anymore. And you found your strength to make it through. You found what you needed just to get over the other side. And you knew that things were so stacked against you that it was only God who showed up and showed out. It was only God who made a way out of no way. It was only God who blessed you from the top of your head to the sole of your feet and you couldn't help but praise him. Only God can take a woman who everybody said was barren and bless her with children. Only God can take a man whose heart was failing him, whose heart was attacking him, and God only can allow him to lead a new life and have a new lease on life. Only God can take a man who's sinking deep in sin, like they said, far from the peaceful shore. Only God can pick him up. Only God can clean him up. Only God can fill him up with the Holy Ghost. Only God can allow him to be used to spread the good news that Jesus said. Some of us have been through some only God situation. Only God can give you new life. Only God can save your soul. Only God can forgive your sins. Only God is righteous. So only God deserves our praise. We must acknowledge the blessings in our lives that come only from God. Yeah. When you know that God has blessed you, you've got a reason to praise Him. When you acknowledge that all that is good comes from God, you've got a reason to praise Him. So we praise God for what he's done. And we praise God for who he is. Let's go back to the text again. 
Because according to the text, when Jesus was approaching Jerusalem, the whole multitude of the disciples began to rejoice and praise God with a loud voice for all the mighty works they had seen him perform. And they began to rejoice uh -huh. and praise the Lord yeah. for who he is, saying, Blessed be the king that cometh in the name of the Lord. They said, Peace in heaven and glory in the heart. You see, they recognized that King Jesus was coming to his throne. They recognized that the Savior of the whole world was there to save their souls. They acknowledged that Jesus was coming in the name of God. They acknowledged that God was coming in the presence of of Jesus Christ. Yeah. So they began to praise him for who he is. They began to shout the glory because of who he is. And they were excited because of who he is. Yeah. Some of us need to ask ourselves, when was the last time we were excited because of who God is? When was the last time we were filled with joy because of who God is. There should be some excitement in your prayer. Amen? Amen. There, there should be some enthusiasm in your prayer. You should be excited to praise your creator. You should be excited that God has provided your daily bread. You should be excited that God has blessed you to be in the land of the living. You should be excited that the Lord is still in the blessing business. You should be excited that God has a holy word just for you. You should be excited that God is God. The Bible says, let Israel rejoice in him who made them. We should be excited about praising our creator. It says that the children of Zion should be joyful in their king. Life is a reason to give him praise. Breath is a reason to give him praise. The use of your limbs is a reason to give him praise. Because he is God all by himself is a reason to give him praise. His mercy and kindness to see the goodness of the Lord while still in the land of the living. To inquire in his temple. You know how many people right now wish they could come up into the house of God. You know how many people right now wish they could get up off a sick bed and come into the house of God? Do you know how many people right now wish they were not incarcerated and they could come into the house of God? Do you know how many people right now somebody is planning their funeral and they wish they could come into the house of God? In the house of God is where we get blessed. In the house of God is where we hear his word. In the house of God is where we come to praise him. Don't let the rock cry out for you. Cry out praises to God for yourself. The word of God says, let them praise him in the dance and let them sing praises with every instrument. Your excitement ought to spill out in the words that come out of your mouth. Your excitement ought to show forth in the actions and the movements that you make with your body. Jeremiah, I like the way Jeremiah said, he said it's like fire. <laughs> Shut up in my bone. Yeah. He says, I was weary trying to hold it back. I tried to keep it down, but it would not stay. I tried to keep it back, but I could not hold it anymore. I tried to not let it show, but the Lord would not let it stay. It was like fire shut up in my bones. That fire you got in your bones, sometimes you need to just let it explode. That fire you got in your bones, sometimes you just need to let somebody else catch it. That fire you got in your bones, Sometimes you need to get on your feet. So say, feet, don't fail me now. That fire, you want to let it go. You want to not hold back on God. Because God is never held back on you. You got to let it go. Let the praise.
praise go forth. Let the blessings go forth. Let the glory be revealed. Show God how much you love him. Show God how much you enjoy him. Don't hold back. Let your praise be known. He says they ought to praise him with the dead. We ought to praise him with everything we've got. So this is what happened. According to the text. Let's go back again. Let's go right back to the text. According to the text. When Jesus was approaching Jerusalem. The whole multitude of the disciples. Began to rejoice. And praise God with a loud voice. For the mighty works that they had seen him perform. And they began to rejoice. And praise the Lord for who he is, saying, Blessed be the king that cometh in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. And some of the Pharisees who were among the multitude said unto him, Master, rebuke thy disciples. And he answered and said unto them, I tell you, if these should hold their peace, the stones will immediately cry. Yeah. God wants us to know today that God will be praised. God is able, even from the rocks, to raise up children of Abraham. God is able, even from the rocks, mm -hmm. to raise up children who will praise his name. God is able to soften the hardest heart and raise up children who will praise him. God is able to cause the lilies of the field to praise him. God is able to cause the fowl in the skies to praise him. God is able to cause the beasts who creep and crawl on the ground to praise him. I'm trying to tell you this morning that God is able to cause a dead church to praise his name. God is able to cause a Pharisee to praise his name. God is able to call those who are full of hatred to be filled with the Holy Ghost, to be filled with love, to be filled with grace, to be filled with the mercy. I'm talking about the coldest sinner, the hardest heart of them all. God is able to melt the cold heart. God is able to soften the stiff neck and food. God is able to call somebody to say, Lord, Lord,